All right. So I'm also going to be talking about testing, um, but uh, specifically mutation testing, which is kind of a meta subject. Uh, so a little bit of background. Um, I uh, wrote a tool called Vertigo, uh, which the implements mutation testing for smart contracts, which I uh, released um, about a year ago. Um, and uh, in this presentation, uh, I'll first give a, a little bit of background on mutation testing a uh, crash course of sorts. And then um, I'd like to talk about the features that are currently in uh, the mutation testing tool and the features that I would like to add and how um, kind of other parts of the technology stack can enable uh, these features uh, because uh, the mutation testing tool is kind of built on top of, of um, other tools like uh, the Solidity compiler. Um, when we talk about mutation testing, uh, you almost always first have to talk about code coverage. And um, code coverage is this ubiquitous method which is used to evaluate test suites at the moment. Um, I think almost all uh, people will, will use this metric to see whether um, their test suite is adequate. Uh, but there's a few issues with code coverage. Specifically, it doesn't really tell you anything about the code that you do cover, but it does tell you uh, something, namely the code that you don't cover yet. Um, so it is actually a very useful metric because it, it helps you improve. It, it tells you where, where to change your tests uh, to um, have a better test suite, to have better guarantees. Uh, mutation testing, on the other hand, uh, tries to improve on this metric uh, by telling you exactly how efficient your test suite is at detecting bugs, rather than just telling you which part uh, of the code are, are covered. Which is great because it allows you to uh, improve your test suite even more efficiently. It also gives you a nice measure of the guarantees uh, given by your test suite. Uh, so kind of to give an overview of mutation testing, uh, this is the general strategy. Um, we start out by creating a lot of bugs, uh, which could be introduced in a, a, a Solidity project. Then um, we run the test feed for each bug and see if the bug is detected. And then we know something about which where these bugs uh, that didn't get detected live and we can improve the test suite. So generating these bugs, how does this happen? So in mutation testing, uh, we call these bugs mutants uh, because they are mutations of the original program. And we use so-called mutation operators to take the original project and modify it to get, get this um, uh, bug in the program. And mutation operators are basically rules. Uh, they can be substitution rules, which describe how, how to inject bugs, basically. And uh, for the tool vertigo, what I did is I looked at existing tools um, for the mutation operators used there, also in previous um, research. Uh, and I implemented some that are somewhat specific to the weaknesses that happen in Solidity smart contracts. Uh, to give you an example um, of what mutation operators do, is, uh, I have uh, made a little table. Uh, so for example, we swap uh, the addition sign uh, with a subtraction. Um, another one which I really like is the modifier removal mutation operator. Uh, where we take a look at the source code and um, to generate a bug, we remove a modifier. And what I like about this is that it kind of emulates a case where a developer forgets to introduce some authorization and authentication logic, which, which generally um, is used, uh, which generally is implemented using modifiers, such as the only owner um, modifier. Um, after having generated a bunch of bugs, uh, we, we get 
to a part where we need to evaluate them to know like whether the test we detect them or not, um, which is the next next uh, step. Um, so kind of the two basic things uh, that can happen are the test suite succeeds or it fails. So if the test suite succeeds, that means that we were not actually able to find a bug or the bu introduced bug, um, in which case the, the mutant uh, survived uh, and we call the mutant alive. The other case is where the test suite fails, in which case, um, the mutant is detected and we say it's killed or dead. Um, then there's two, two additional categories to deal with uh, some edge cases. So for example, what could happen is um, a mutation operator modifies a piece of code that um, results in invalid solidity, in which case the compiler will not su successfully compile um, and we cannot even run the test feed. So in this case, we say the mutant is um, errored. Uh, the fourth case is timed out, um, which we have included because mutants can also introduce infinite loops. Uh, so what we do, we take a timeout based on the original uh, time that a test we took. Um, and after this timeout has expired, we uh, kill the execution of the test suite and um, we categorize the the mutant as timed out. So then there's this fifth category, which I put in, in brackets because it's not really a, a category on its own, but rather a specific instance of a live mutant. So what mutation operators also can do is modify code so that there is a syntactic change while not changing the underlying meaning of the code. So to give you an example, um, I have uh, the implementation of the, the max function uh, by Open and Zeppelin. And as you can see, um, there's a slight difference here in the comparison operator. However, uh, so the difference lies uh, at a point where A and B are equal, but for the evaluation of uh, the max function, it doesn't really matter which branch you take when A and B are equal, because both will be the max number. So this is an equivalent mutant, and we don't really want to account for this as an alive mutant, because the test feed um, was not insufficient. Um, it, it, it was doing OK, because this is actually also correct. Um, so unfortunately, this process is somewhat manual and uh, we I implemented some feature to automate this a little bit, but it's not possible to automate that in general. Uh, so there will always be some um, categorization, manual categorization required when you're performing mutation testing. Once we have categorized all the mutants, we can compute the mutation score, which is kind of similar to the, the code coverage metric. But in this case, we're talking about the efficiency of detecting bugs of the test suite. So we actually, we, the, the mutation score is computed um, using this formula. And it's basically the rate um, at which you detect uh, mutants. So you take the total number of mutants that you killed or that were detected and divided by the total number of valid mutants. So these are the non-equivalent alive mutants and the killed mutants. We disregard the other ones for the mutation score. So this gives you a general metric of the quality of your test suite and then the specific uh, surviving mutations tell you something uh, uh, give you really detailed information about which part of the code you could improve or uh, you could improve the test suite for rather. Okay, so that was kind of a bird's eye view of mutation testing theory. Right now, uh, I'd like to go over a few of the features that are in Vertigo the tool right now. Then what's kind of on my wish list followed by how 
um, kind of the foundational technologies such as the compiler or test frameworks um, can enable or support the development of these features. So first, what do we have today? Um, there's a few features listed here, um, which, which I think are uh, kind of the main ones. Um, and the first one is parallel evaluation, which is pretty straightforward. Instead of uh, running the test feeds sequentially for each uh, mutant, we run them in parallel. Um, most of the times there's going to be a lot of tests, so we won't run all of them in parallel, uh, but we'll be able to use uh, whatever computational resources your machine uh, might have. The second optimization is mutant sampling, where instead of taking the entire set of mutants we've generated in the first phase, we take a random sample of those. This will give you an estimation of what the original um, mutation score would have been, while redu drastically reducing the time you need to compute it. And there's a balance here because there's, of course, inaccuracy because you're taking a random sample. Um, the third really nice feature, uh, what I think is a really nice feature, is the support of universal mutator style rules. So this is a project um, in for general mutation testing um, where the authors have designed a method of formulating um, mutation rules uh, using regex patterns. Um, and this will allow you to easily uh, develop and demo uh, different mutation rules. But what it will also do is enable you to write mutation rules specific to a certain project. For example, you might be able to write mutation rules for a specific safe math library. And here I have a little example from the universal mutator repository itself. Uh, which describes some mutation rules for solidity, specifically uh, the time keywords. Uh, so this should give you some idea of uh, what this um, is capable of. So lastly, we have compiler equivalents, uh, which is enabled by the solidity compiler. Um, and this has to do with um, these equivalent mutations. So what Vertigo does is it takes the original program and the mutated program and it will compile both. It will then compare the generated bytecodes and if they are equal, conclude that therefore also the source code must have been equal in meaning and it will disregard um, the, the mutant entirely. So it won't even start the testing process. Um, this assumes, of course, that the compiler is correct. Um, and, and let's hope it is. Okay, so what's next? Um, there's kind of two categories. Um, first is optimizations, the other is usability. Um, there's no time to really do a demo, but um, these would really help. Um, but first, optimization. So um, first, is uh, incremental evaluation. And um, this would be really nice to have um, because uh, you, in, in a regular scenario, um, you would be running mutation testing every once in a while, maybe. And between those runs, um, you could reuse a lot of information. So for example, what you can do is um, look at the previous analysis results and look at which um, test killed which mutant. And if you see the same mutant again, try to find that test and run specifically that test first instead of running the entire test suite. Um, that can save a lot of time. So maybe 80% of, of the mutants will be killed by the same test and that will save a ton on execution time because you won't have to execute the entire test suite every time. Then there's uh, mutant clustering, and mutant clustering is kind of similar to uh, mutant sampling, uh, but instead of taking a sample from the entire set of mutants, we group them first um, and take samples from the groups. And this gives a more accurate estimation of the uh, mutation score. The third optimization, which I really would like to have, is test selection. 
based on code coverage. So what we do is um, given detailed information on the coverage, specifically, um, you'd want to know which tests cover which lines of code. You'd select just those tests um, that cover a mutant to, to evaluate rather than the entire test. Group. So assume, for example, that each mutant will only be covered by 10% of the test suite. Then this optimization will give you a performance improvement of 10 times, which is huge. It takes uh, like a, a, well, it's used. Anyway, so uh, then there's a, a usability aspect. So I didn't get to show this, but if you set up uh, Vertigo to run uh, parallel evaluation, then you have to instantiate a bunch of Ganesh networks. Um, and well, this setup process shouldn't really be necessary, I think. Uh, and I think removing that will make um, setting up um, mutation testing a lot easier uh, because you won't have to set up like, for example, 12 development networks. Uh, the other part of this is that um, I believe Ganesh is not made to run the test feed uh, like 500 times. Um, what happened on my machine is that it would create like a few million files, uh, which would use up the inodes on my machine and it would break almost everything. Um, so with dynamic Ganesh network creation, you could clean up after a test feed run and prevent this problem from happening. And then we also have um, framework expansion, which is uh, basically means that I would extend Vertigo to work with other frameworks, which also uh, are commonly used. Uh, because currently we only uh, really support uh, Truffle. So then um, there's kind of three areas of uh, foundational technology which uh, support the development of, of uh, mutation testing framework in general, but specifically Vertigo. Um, and that's the compiler test framework. And then I made a little category of others. So first the compiler um, and solid, the Solidity compiler does actually already does a bunch of things uh, right for um, mutation testing. So first where, where Vertigo really uh, uses the Solidity compiler is in the AST it generates. So instead of doing manual parsing and analysis of the source code, um, we, we kind of use the uh, Solidity generated AST to find specifically the locations that we want to mutate. Um, based on the information in the AST, we determine how we should modify the original file to get to the mutant. Um, since a recent version of Solidity, it's also, I think, 6.2. Um, 0, 0.62, uh, it's also possible to recompile from a modified ESD. So that would make the process even easier. But on the other hand, it would also likely require some more tight coupling between the mutation testing tool and a test framework because you need to be part of the compilation process. The second part where the compiler really helps out is in the compiler equivalence feature, which I mentioned previously. So, so I won't really go into it. Um, then we have the test framework, which uh, kind of enables almost everything of the mutation testing process because it's our interface uh, to the project. So the first part is um, the interaction with the unit test, which is not optimal at the moment for mutation testing um, because it's not, as far as I know, not easy. Uh, at least to directly um, execute single tests or maybe a list of tests, uh, which I would, which the mutation testing framework would want to do. So for example, the test selection optimization and the incremental mutation testing optimization would require this functionality. Um, I do think it's possible to um, sing out specific files to run so that's already like uh, some uh, improvement over the generic uh, run the entire test suite. 
uh, but but I think um, like a more detailed interface um, would be super beneficial for uh, mutation testing tools. Um, then we have the other part, which is uh, automation of test network creation. And I think uh, this is handled by some of the uh, test frameworks or IDE frameworks, but to a limited extent, because um, I guess it's not a common use case to run your test suite in parallel five times. So uh, that's probably why it hasn't been implemented yet to have multiple test networks being created and cleaned up all the time. Uh, but this is um, also a feature that could be handled outside of the test network. And lastly, there's this item of test evaluation speed, um, where really any improvement to test evaluation speed, so this could be like a compiler optimization, a VM optimization, or some other optimization also reflects in uh, the performance of a mutation testing tool. And then the last uh, category, uh, miscellaneous. Um, I've put detailed code coverage here uh, because uh, code coverage is currently handled by, uh, I think, by a separate tool called uh, Solidity Coverage. Um, and it's on the issue tracker for this project, but I'm not sure when it's going to be implemented. Um, but this is one thing that uh, would enable the test case selection optimization. Um, and I believe some other features outside of mutations. Um, okay, so that was kind of the, the overview um, of mutation testing theory, kind of what the tool does right now and what could be improved and how other people uh, in uh, other parts of the tool stack might um, help with the implementation of, of these optimizations. And uh, I think there's some time for questions. I would also love to hear any suggestions, maybe improvements on uh, like usability or other questions. Yes, thank you for your talk. Um, as Joran already outlined, we still have five minutes left for questions. So feel free to raise your hand if you have a question and you are attending here in the chat room uh, in the video conference. If you are watching the live stream, please put your question in the GitHub chat. And we will be patient and wait a bit because we know there's a delay. Any feedback here from the room? Does not seem like it so far, but um, let's give it a few more minutes to also give the people on the live stream the chance to react to this. In the meantime, just checking in, Leo and Martin, you're both there already, right? Yes, I can see you. And Nicholas wants to say something. Yes, go ahead. Hi, John. Uh, we've tried using a couple of mutation testing uh, tools in the open sampling contracts library a couple of times. And the issue always is that the test rate is so large and the number of contracts so large that running the entire test for a single mutation doesn't make any sense. Um, do you think instead of having the automated, uh, like only run what tests need to be run based on coverage, if you could like have a way to very simply say only do mutations on this contract and then only run these tests, which would be as simple as uh, provide a way for the user of the library to write the test command where they could say, I'll only run this test. Uh, that would make it much more usable. So that's like um, uh, yeah, for improved usability. Uh, I think you could certainly do that. Uh, so uh, protocol already uh, supports the inversion of, of this uh, by allowing you to ignore certain directories. So I guess what you could do right now is ignore everything except the thing you'd like to test. Um, there's no um, selection of tests uh, implemented yet. 
but I think I could. Um, but your question is kind of valid about like the duration on a project like yours. Um, and I ran Vertigo on, on uh, well, Open Zeppelin and, and Aragon OS as well. And it took, well, using 16 parallel um, processes took like two hours uh, or between two and three. Uh, and that's, as you said, a really long time. But I, I think that given um, these optimizations, for example, the um, test selection and incremental evaluation optimizations uh, that could be cut down a lot. For example, the test case selection at 10 times speed up would decrease the time to maybe 30 minutes or so. Um, of course, it would have to be evaluated uh, to see if that's actually the speed up that you would get. But I think with some optimizations, it should certainly become a lot more usable and practical to run in a CI setup or at least frequently. Yeah, that, that sounds great. Thanks.